Hey everyone, Derek here. In this one, I'm excited to share with you a pretty cool use case. What I want to show you how we can do today is take in Datadog alerts and automatically trigger Python code executions. So what does that mean? That means we can do all sorts of event remediation techniques that we want to on our applications using it. So take for example, we get a Datadog alert and that alert tells us that there's a problem with some system on our application. We can use Python code and automatically resolve that problem. I'll talk through a few examples in this video, but the sky's the limit on what we can use this application for. So with all of that said, let's look at a few brief examples on a few different things that we may want to do, such as sending a request to our own server to get information, sending a request to a third party service or an API call, and we can do automatic event testing using Selenium and Python code. Let's dive in. Getting started, I'll create a new script. So Datadog, and Python remediation examples. Then I'll click on create. And what this will do is put me inside of my own layer. Inside my layer, what I can do is pull in that Datadog trigger like how we saw previously. I already have mine set up. And if you need any help setting yours up, there's a video linked down below that will help you out. But all I need to do since I've used this before on my account is to turn this on. Now, anytime I get a Datadog alert, using one of my monitors that uses the WayScript webhook, and I'll show you all of that, I'll get an event, and then everything below this trigger will be activated. That means we can pull in a Python step, and this will activate each time this trigger fires. Sweet. So now we have this trigger, and we're expecting an output of event. So let's go ahead and turn that on. What that will do is give us, once we sync, this variable of event down here. Right now, there's not a lot in it, but once we get that response from that webhook, then this will be filled and it'll have information about that event displayed here. And we can use that information to conditionally do an action depending on it. If we wanted to, we could pull in if statements and then say something like if title of event is this, then we could pull in our Python step into that branch of our if statement. For me, I'll do this all with code. So I'll delete this if statement and I'll confirm it. And now what I can do is open this code. So our first use case was Selenium automated testing. Our second one was sending a request to our own server. And this might be useful if we're getting information from our server or we can code in actions on our own applications that we can trigger. Then. Our third one will be something like sending an API call. So you could imagine that this would be sending a request to something like CircleCI or GitHub. So we could do a push and build our main application again if we needed to. So I'll do this with CircleCI. Starting out, let's go ahead and pull open or pull over Datadog. And then we'll look at the monitors that I have. So we see that I have a few different monitors depending on the event that comes in that will send a webhook to our application over here. And what these will do is they will fill this struct that we have here and give us that information that we can use in our Python step. So let's go ahead and get one of those events to come through. I'll just mock one so we can get it right away. And then we should see our trigger fire and this struct fill. Sweet. So we saw that mock data come through and you can ignore this. I just have a separate program set up for whenever I get that monitor. So what happened was is I mocked that data and now that data becomes available to us inside this event struct. So what we can do is use this title, which is just a draggable pill. We can drag it or use it in our Python code by accessing the variables dictionary. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and pull in that variables dictionary. We'll say event will be equal to variables and then that variable name, which is just event. This will create from a way script variable, a Python one. Now that we had that variable set up, we see that the title has demo events in it. So we'll say something like if demo in event, we'll access that key, a title, then we'll perform some action. 
So let's say that this monitor is the one that we want to use to do automated testing using Selenium. What we'll do is use a function. So we'll say automated test. And now we need to go up and create that function. So automated test and this will just be whatever Python code we want to use here to pull in Selenium. We already have some typed up and I'll go over and pull that in. So we'll take this and paste it in. So all we're doing here is we're importing Selenium and then we're, these are default options provided by Wayscript that we just have to put in to get it to work. Then we're going and getting a URL which we need to define. So we'll say my URL for the website that I'm testing is this right here. So I will paste that in. We'll go and get that URL and then we will get the page source and return it down here. All I'm doing here is getting the page source, which may not seem like a lot, but a lot of these applications are highly specific to how you build them. So just take this code and then do what you need to do with it. So whether that be filling out a form and testing that it submits or just playing with interactions on your website to see if they're returned as a valid response. For this one, I'll just take the page source because I feel like that translates pretty easily to a bunch of different projects. But this is definitely room for optimization. So now that we have that page source, we could either just print it to our log or we could do some test on it, which is what we want to do up here. So without using Selenium to do the test, we could do it down here. We could say something like result and set this as an empty string. And then we could say something like if, and then whatever characteristic we wanted in our page source was returned, then we could test it down here. So we could say something like our response will be automated test. So if, and then we'll just say a string like body in response, then result will be true. Else we'll say result will be equal to false. And then we can return this result. So we'll say variables and then result will be equal to result. And this is just creating a Wayscript variable from a Python one. Then we could do more with that result, such as send ourselves an email if false or do nothing if true. We've already seen how we can use Selenium and do automated interactions on our website using a Datadog event. Now let's see how we can send a request to our own server to perform an action. We might say something like if, and then I have another monitor set up that tutorial is in the alert. So we'll say if tutorial in event title, we might want to run a function called visit app. Then we can go up here and we can create that. So let's say visit app and we can just import the libraries that we need. And then we can say something like response equals requests dot get will go to URL and this time I have a specific URL that I want this application to go to and I'll go and grab it and what this might do inside my application is something like build a list of users and return that as a response or I could do much more and have really complex interactions here right now a get request probably just means that I want to get information from it, but you could imagine this as a post request and doing some action on your actual application. Then we could say something like return response.json. So this will give us back the JSON dictionary so we can see the information that we get from our own server. Sweet. So we have visit app and then we might just want something like response is equal to that function. Then we could say variables result is equal. So we'll get back this JSON variables result equals response and then whatever key that we want. So it might be something like status. 
Sweet. So now we have two of the three interactions built out for us. Finally, let's take a look at how we can send an API call to something like Circle CI. We'll go ahead and pull up their documentation. For this, you could imagine that what we want to do is trigger a workflow. So we could say something like approve a job. They conveniently already have the Python code typed up for us. And all we need to do is to create a function. So we'll do something else. So we'll say if, and then we'll put a random string here. If example is in our event title, then we'll say something like circle workflow build. And we'll run that. So now we need to create that function. So circle workflow build. And we'll just paste this code in. We'll need to make sure that the indentation is at the right spot. So we'll go through and indent all this over. And then we'll need to replace our access code here. In future videos, I'll make sure that I cover Circle CI and how we can use their API in future videos using Datadog events. But right now, we'll just leave this as the default code. So it won't work, but hopefully you get the idea of how it will. Now, we might just say something like response is equal, and then we'll say variables result, like how we have last time. And we might want some bit of information in that response. It looks like message is the only thing in that response. So we'll say response message. Sweet. So we have a bunch of different interactions already set up to where, depending on the alert that we get, from Datadog, we can do some interaction with Python automatically below it. So now we just have to test it out. Let's say, for example, that we want to do our automated test with Selenium, and then we want to see if we get back the body tag, and then if we do, then we get back a true result, and if we do not, we get back a false result. To do this, we need the event title of demo, which I believe just went through, and we should get back the result Oh, just kidding. Our event was the status of the website. So this struct must have tutorial as the title heading, which it does. And we can see that right here. And that's exactly how we can do automated event handling depending on the title of the struct. This time we got in demo event. Therefore, we should get back a different response, which we get true. This is because in our Python code, we have that conditional where we get back true or false if demo is contained in the event title. And that's exactly how we can start doing different actions depending on the monitor alert that we get back from Datadog. There's so many cool use cases that we can use with just Datadog and Python inside of Wayscript. And I'll dive into a lot more of these in future videos. I hope this one just shows you some of the power that is behind this little bit of logic and some of the cool use cases that we can use it for. And that pretty much wraps this one up. If you have any questions or comments, as always, please let us know and we'll help you out. Until next time.